Welcome! The human biological disease we are presenting today is Stevens-Johnson syndrome. We chose this syndrome because one of our group members has the syndrome and has experienced an outbreak before, so we saw this as an opportunity to learn more about it. Stevens-Johnson syndrome, also known as SJS, is a biological disease that affects the skin and mucous membranes. It causes blistering and sores on the skin and mucous membranes until the skin eventually peels and slows off entirely. Early symptoms of an SJS outbreak include fever, sore mouth and throat, fatigue, cough, and burning eyes. It can then progress into widespread skin pain, skin rash, blisters on the skin and mucous membranes, and eventually shedding of the skin. An SJS outbreak is almost always caused by a reaction to a drug, causing 80% of all outbreaks. Drugs that are the most common cause of an outbreak are sulfonamides, penicillins, and anticonvulsants, amongst others. Other causes can be infectious and can be caused by the H herpes virus, pneumonia, HIV, or hepatitis A. Stevens-Johnson syndrome is a very rare disease with three to seven cases of rising per million people. SJS is usually diagnosed when an individual is suffering from symptoms rather than prior to an outbreak. The factors that determine if an individual is suffering from SJS is the appearance of the skin, how much of the skin is affected, and if the patient is experiencing pain rather than itching. Stevens-Johnson syndrome was first described in 1922 by pediatricians Albert M. Stevens and Frank Chambliss Johnson when examining the cases of two boys aged 7 and 8. Before being described, both cases had been misdiagnosed by other doctors. The boys were displaying an extraordinary generalized eruption with continued fever, inflamed buccal mucosa, and severe purulent conjunctivitis. Since 1983, SJS was considered to be synonymous with erythema multiforme major the rare counterpart to erythema multiform minor. Erythema multiform, or EM, was first observed in 1866 by Ferdinand von Hebra as an acute, self-limited, and sometimes reoccurring skin condition that is considered to be a type of a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction associated with certain infections, medications, and other various triggers. EM is usually found in individuals who have the herpes virus, HSV. The reaction is then instigated when an individual with HSV ingests an HSV antigen, causing the cell-mediated immune reaction. While EM and SJS are similar in symptomatology, the outstanding difference between the two is that SJS occurs only in those with a genetic predisposition. This distinction was made in the 1990s when researchers Bastugi and Rougeau established that SJS is different than EM major. SJS applies to the mucous membrane erosions and widespread small blisters that arise from the erythematous and or purpuric malculi that are different from classic targets. SJS is now considered to be a minor form of toxic epidermal necrolysis, or TEN. SJS is closely related to toxic epidermal necrolysis, or TEN. In fact, the only area differentiating them is the amount of skin detachment. SJS occurs when 10% or less of the BSA, body surface area, is affected. 10 occurs when 30% or more BSA is affected. Anything in between this is considered a mix of the two diseases. SJS in 10 is most strongly associated with the different variations of the HLA-B gene. This gene is part of the human leukocyte antigen HLA complex, which distinguishes proteins made by the body from proteins made by external invaders like viruses and bacteria. The HLA-B gene has many variations which allow for each individual's immune system to react to foreign proteins in different ways. People with SJS and 10 commonly have a few of those variations more than other people. This is what causes the reaction to certain medications. This reaction happens by a process in which immune cells called cytotoxic T cells and natural killer, or NK cells, release a natural substance called granulysins. This substance is ultimately what kills the cells in the skin and mucous membrane. Along with attachment of the skin and death, other reported side effects include asthma, blindness, cataracts, PTSD, psoriasis, low immune system, permanent nail loss of nail beds, and others. Individuals diagnosed with SGS or 10 are immediately hospitalized and all medications are stopped. They are treated in the burn center or intensive care unit. A high priority is given to the prevention of infection. Unlike burns, however, skin grafts are not needed for the skin grows back on its own in time if the individual survives. Cyclosporine is thought to reduce the duration of the burns and potentially increase the survival rate. Antibiotics are immediately prescribed if the sores develop an infection. And luckily, SJS has a 1-5% to death rate only. Recover from SJS utilizes treatments such as fluid replacement, attention to nutrition, tending to blisters to prevent infection, and constant supervision on the eyesight and the person affected.
Depending on the severity, recovery time can span from several weeks to several months. Because SJS is so rare, many doctors and medical staff do not know how to handle SJS in its early stages, and some do not know about the symptom at all. With better awareness, the overall severity of these cases can drop significantly. Foundations such as the Stevens-Johnson Syndrome Foundation help bring people together with this rare condition. Their website offers a lot of information on the condition and contact information of support groups near you. For prevention of SJS, genetic testing can give an at-risk individual the knowledge of what drugs to avoid. The development of a quick method of diagnosis is crucial to the treatment of SJS, which leaves children and the elderly most vulnerable. Current biopsies and skin treatment tests can take up to five days to yield results, further delaying treatment. The following are some interesting facts about Stevens-Johnson syndrome. The first, while the occurrence of SGS around the world is relatively standard bet between three to seven cases per million people, in Germany, however, there are as few as one case per million people. In Southeast Asian countries such as Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Malaysia, SJS is caused by allopurinol, a uric acid reducer. SJS is not limited to Homo sapiens sapiens. The cases have also been reported in dogs, cats, and monkeys. Stevens-Johnson syndrome is a very rare disease that affects only a few people out of a million. While it may be difficult to know beforehand if an individual is at risk of developing SJS, it is important that healthcare professionals can recognize the symptoms before they escalate. Left unattended, SJS can cause severe scarring, blindness, and even death, with children and the elderly being most vulnerable. In the future, faster means of procuring biopsy results can help accelerate the treatment and prevent SJS from causing irreparable damage. Thank you for listening!